I'm speaking with Adam Franklin of Swerve Driver, and they're on uh, a big reunion tour in 2008. We're, uh, we're going to talk to Adam today uh, about some of the influences in his life um, and how early some of those may have come in. Um, I think probably the very first single that I can remember listening to was uh, by a band called Argent, and that's Rod Argent, who was in the Zombies in the 60s, and he had a band called uh, Argent. Right. And they did a song called Hold Your Head Up. Was it Argent like something you and your friends found, or was there an influence that was bringing it to you? It was, it was my dad's record, you know. Dad's my dad record. brought, like, he, I remember him buying in like, 1972, like, Heart of Gold by, uh, uh, by Neil Young, School's Out by Alice Cooper, uh -huh. and then I guess me and my brother would listen to the records in the hit parade, and yeah, they were 45p in England at the time, so we'd, I guess, get an allowance every week and we'd buy a couple of records. And uh, back then, it was a lot of the glam rock stuff that was in England at the time. T-Rex and Slade and The Sweet and bands like Mud and Mother Hoople. Yep. And um, all these bands were playing really kind of quite heavy guitars. I mean, listen back to it now, and if you listen to the Sex Pistols in 1977, their guitar sound was very similar to Slade's, you know, yeah. heavy and distorted, you know. And when, uh, when did a guitar come into your life? Me and my friend Mark, we both got, got bought these little tiny kind of uh, mini Spanish guitars, I guess. Yeah. And if you played on the lower strings, you could do the, the intro to get it on, you know. But he figured it out then, back in, you know, around about 72 or 73. And we'd be doing the whole tennis rackets and miming to the songs, you know. Right. But I didn't really pick up the guitar until much later, probably about 1978 or 9, I guess, you know. I guess I actually kind of started you know, writing these songs, and then uh, my way of recording them was like recording on a little tape recorder, and then playing it back, you know, like a kind of bass line thing on another recorder, or recording something on top. When did you start uh, doing like an organized effort to like bring a bunch of guys in and, and get an idea out? Well, I got asked to join a band in 1982, I think. The band was called The Suspects, Suspects. and um, Simon Quinn was a guitar player. Simon Quinn's little brother is Mickey Quinn, who's now the bass player in Supergrass, you know. So Mickey Quinn would come down into the rehearsal room, he's like this tall, like, all right, lads, how are you doing? Like, all right, Mickey, and ruffle his hair or whatever, you know. And we used to record, we used to um, rehearse in the, in the Quinn's kind of family house, their kind of basement, you know. Mm -hmm. Going back further, like, back into like, the early 70s, I guess, and like, it seemed like all these little kids at school were buying these records. I mean, it seems kind of absurd now in a way to think that all these little kids were buying T-Rex singles and stuff. Yeah. But, but like Hawkwind had a hit single of 72 Silver Machine, which my brother bought that. And then my brother bought the album. That was the first album I ever heard, Space Ritual by Hawkwind. And like, yeah, Hawkwind. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. So Hawkwind's a massive space rock band. And again, it seems crazy that me and my brother, aged like five and seven, were That's listening pretty to heavy this stuff. crazy. I know, yeah. The, the way that everyone used to sort of you know, divide it up was that the older brothers, of which, you know, I, I'm a younger brother, as is Jimmy, and a lot of my friends were little brothers, and our big brothers would be listening to, uh, you know, Deep Purple, Led Zeppelin, mm -hmm. Black Sabbath, and Pink Floyd. You know, that's the big brother band, you yeah. know. And the little brothers were getting into, like, T-Rex, Slade, Sweet, and Gary Glitter as well, of course, who's yeah. now shamed himself massively. I do see that there's a, a way that you assimilate American rock and... British rock in, in the right ways and uh, unique times in, in your career. I, I guess a lot of time passed from like the, that early kind of like you know exposure to the pop music on the radio, and I don't think there's any differentiation between American and English stuff. I mean, it's interesting that bands like Kiss mean nothing in the UK. I mean, you ask somebody in England what songs Kiss made, and they just didn't make an impact at all because we had Slade, I guess. You know? Right. But then, of course, in England, around about '77, sort of punk rock happened, and then new wave music but I think it was definitely after punk and new wave that people started thinking about you know getting in bands even people in their early teens or even age 12 or whatever it was that I was at the time you know I think the 80s became quite interesting because then it'd be like John Peel was the whole thing you know in England and everybody listened to the John Peel show and then you know punk sort of mutated into post-punk and Joy Division and Echo and the Bunnymen and all that kind of stuff you know and my brother discovered like a band like Black Flag and kind of like LA sort of punk you know that was going on and like Husker Du and all that kind of thing, and then Husker Du is really what takes us up, takes us up to kind of the Swerve Driver era because we discovered, you know, Sonic Youth, and then Donosa Jr. came over, came out, you know, yep. and definitely when Swerve Driver then kind of got together as Swerve Driver, there were a lot of American influences, you know, because it just seemed like there was more, it was more exciting and more kind of uh, visceral. The guitar playing was harsher from the American bands. Right. Thank Thanks you for man. talking to us on Timeline. Pleasure. And. Uh,
Adam Franklin.